Hello, Kidly Wings. My name is Ella. And my name is Julia. And today we're going to be talking about the Pacific art piece from the Unit 9 curriculum. Here's a portrait of an important war and peacetime leader named Tamati Walker Riri. I think you're thinking of Rihanna, you know, Umbrella Rihanna. His name is Tamati Wakanene. Um, the dance? No, his name was Tamati Wakanene. He was such a unique name that he had chosen for himself once he had been baptized and converted to the Wesleyan faith in 1839. The name had come from Thomas Walker, an English merchant and patron of the Church Missionary Society. He was a great leader during a difficult time in New Zealand. While the first British missionaries and settlers were arriving and changing the Maori's land as they knew it. Maori are the indigenous people of Aotearoa, New Zealand, who have origins that trace back to islands of eastern Polynesia. Wow, the British always seem to have beef with everyone. Don't you agree, Julia? <laughs> they seem like lousy neighbors. Anyways, the artist was Gottfried Lindauer, who was a well-known Czech artist. He was the most profile and best known painter of the Maori subjects. He arrived at New Zealand and studied at the Academy of Fine Art in Vienna, where he learned painting methods from the Renaissance naturalism paintings. Huh, he seems just as wise as Miss Leprod. There, he befriended a man named Henry Patridge, who later became his patron and commissioned Landor to paint portraits of well-known members of the Maori culture. The exact site for where this painting went is unknown. However, the painting could have been given to a European purchaser as indicated by the well-known Maori clothing on Tamati Wakanini, or could have stayed in the Maori community as ancestral remembrance. This portrait was oil on canvas to display great detail within the art piece and the atmospheric perspective helps to make Nini stand out compared to the dark background. The media of this work of art relates back to the original photograph, which was to be produced by John Crombie for the London Illustrated News. John Crombie? More like John Crummy. Ha 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 ha. Nice try. The purpose of this portrait was to bring ancestral presence into the living world and record likeness. The portrait was also to be cherished by the people and was able to keep Nini's story alive. If you remember my tribe, I certainly wanted to remember all the great things he had done. Ella, don't be getting all sentimental on me now. In the portrait, Nini is wearing a cloak covered in kiwi feathers and has an earring made of green stone on his ear, which are prestigious treasures. What a look. In his right hand, he is holding a weapon known as a tuatua. Try saying that five times fast. Go ahead, I'll wait. The weapons would have had feathers adorning its blade. The hand grip had an oblong or the green eye on the shaft of it. This weapon would have been used to crack skulls of the enemies during war or dislocate and or break the shoulders towards the opposing tribe. All of these details of the weaponry show him as a man of personal status. As you can see, the soft brush strokes on the canvas make the subject appear to be very real and natural, along with its 3D appearance, something he picked up from the Renaissance paintings he had studied back at the Academy in Vienna. Tamati Wakanini has a symmetrical face tattoo known as the Moko. The Moko is a specific message that is worn by members of the tribe that represent tribal affiliations and social structures. The tattoo would have been chiseled with bone into their face and the ink was made from ash and fat. A tattoo would have been rough to the touch like a basketball. Ouch, that would have hurt. I would have remembered him by that tattoo alone. George Washington, the first president of the United States from 1789 to 1797, was the symbol of freedom in our country for centuries. I certainly look up to him as a great leader to this day. He was the commander in chief during the American Revolution and the Revolutionary War. Hodon was on a commission from Virginia's legislator and the sculpture was raised in the Capitol Rotunda in 1796. Believe it or not, Tamati Wakanini and George Washington have a couple similarities between them, even though they are from different cultures and time periods. They were both great leaders that the people looked up to as an icon for their culture. Kind of like how modern day high schoolers look up to LeBron James or Kylie Jenner. Ha ha ha, definitely not. The Maori people looked up to Nini as an important war and peacetime leader, while the U.S. civilians looked up to George Washington as a symbol of freedom. 
In both works of art, they are holding weapons in their hands as Tamadi Wakanini holds his Tuituwa. George Washington holds a sword cast to the side, both signifying that they are trying to keep their land safe and protected. Both leaders try to relate back to their people. This is portrayed in the Washington piece by having him be dressed as a civilian or soldier. And in the Nini piece, he has a facial tattoo, just like the civilians do in the Maori culture. They are both interesting leaders that had an impactful influence on the civilians of their time. Well, that concludes our very important video on Titi Willy Wonka. Julia, his name is Tamati Wakanini. <laughs> My bad.